What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, and the QQQ. I'm going to answer the question, is this a very, very healthy pullback we're seeing? Or is the stock market about to see a much bigger drop? Are we about to see a much bigger pullback, if not a crash? I'm going to give you guys an answer to my opinion about what you should be watching for. But let me just mention that I am not a financial planner. Take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed 15 in total. And the offer ends in just about 12 days from now. Anyways, the QQQ is actually dipping quite a bit right now. So is SPY and Tesla. The market's showing some weakness. We have some very important factors that will affect how the market ends up moving. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that the fear and greed index is currently at neutral, which gives us more time for this to get closer to fear, which suggests that the market does have more downside potential. I still agree with that. I don't think the market is done quite yet with the downside. I still think there is more potential for downside. But the question is now, will the market see a big drop, a huge 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 crash are we about to see a big pullback what is my view i'll talk about that in just a minute so just know for earnings for tesla we actually have earnings coming out on tuesday that's gonna have a big effect on how tesla ends up moving so keep that in the back of your mind out of these three so what do i see for spy i'm gonna start off with this one so we look more bearish okay we're straight up more bearish we could even take a key fibonacci retracement area and kind of break down what the trend is kind of giving us and you guys can see if we take our very handy dandy Fibonacci retracement tool and we start from down here I think that we're currently very very close to our points two three six retracement area that's where SPY is trying to hold up and if we end up losing that support I am noticing that uh, a very very close level uh, is our points three eight two retracement which is where this gap happens to be very close to about the 536 area so it's going to be two very very important areas of interest so I will talk more about these in just a minute but like I said in my earlier video this is not a crash, okay? The first thing is we haven't even lost our 50 EMA. This yellow line right here, we haven't lost that yet. Back in May, when the market was dipping, when SPY went from 533 all the way down to about 518, we actually bounced very close to our 50 EMA only to get bought back up. So there's no sign of us losing the key support yet. So we can't turn into PERMA bears just yet. Remember, the market is very tricky. And what's happening is if the market were to dip more, if everyone turns too fearful, everyone starts selling, what, what's happening is people are starting to buy puts now. And yes, initially people are making money, but if people go too aggressively and they start buying puts, puts, puts like crazy, the market becomes so fearful that the market makers are going to start, you know, causing another squeeze all over again. And it's just history repeating itself. Right now, there weren't that many puts uh, being bought over the last five days. This is just a five-day average, by the way. It does not give us the bigger picture, but it just tell, kind of gives us a short-term view of what people are doing. That is, they're starting to start, they're starting to short the market a bit more, and we're starting to see sentiment becoming closer to fearful. So that's something else that's worth noting. So for spy, I personally think that if we fail to hold 548, okay. We have this nice imbalance over here, which will take us all the way down to the 542 area right over here. Okay, that's going to be your next target. If that fails us, this 540 area is coming. That's going to be very close to where our 50 EMA happens to be. And then if that fails us, our last point of hope is 536. We have to hold 536. That's very close to our points 382 retracement. If not, SPY is going to get a bigger rug pull. And then I will believe that, you know, we're going to see a big, big drop. If not, if we end up holding the 536 area, then yes, we could try to rebound again and it's going to be okay. So keep that in the back of your mind and make sure you watch those levels. 536 is one of the most important support, supports alongside 540. Watch those two supports. They're going to be pivotal. But as long as we're above 536 to 540, this still could bounce. And there's no true confirmation this is going to lead to a big crash. There's no confirmation yet. So don't worry too much about that whole sentiment right now. There's going to be a lot of people on YouTube screaming, the crash has started. We're about to see a huge crash. New lows are coming. Get ready. No, guys. This is not a crash. We're just getting a very healthy pullback. It's only been three red days. Completely fine. Everything's okay. We haven't lost critical pivotal support yet. SPY is still holding 536 to 540. If we lose that, then yes, I will become more concerned. But as of right now, we haven't done that. So it's still very possible we come back down to the 50 EMA, then get a big bounce. It's still a possibility. Do not overthink it. Do not panic. How about the QQQ? And I, I calculated something a little bit different for the QQQ. So the QQQ, this actually dropped harder than SPY. And what else is worth noting is that uh, with this drop that happened to the QQQ, we have very, very important support right here at 472.5, our 50 EMA. 
The last time we did reach this, we actually saw a little rebound and also just notes that during the big drop we had around that April period, we did temporarily lose this for about a couple of weeks before we reclaimed it. So that's going to be a very important support. So here are your levels on the triple Q, okay? QQQ is doing fine. It is selling off and it does look bearish to me, just like SPY. We do look bearish, but this is not a crash. There's no sign that this is a massive crash or anything like that. If I take another Q Fibonacci retracement tool, you'll notice that there are some important levels. I think that the Fibonacci retracement tool doesn't isn't as comprehensive though. Uh, the level I've calculated is basically two supports. The first one, so remember how I called out two supports on SPY 536 and 540? If we lost you know, either one of those, I'd become a lot more concerned. Well, for the QQQ, we're actually very close to the levels I'm becoming concerned about. Basically, we have 472. That's actually very close to where our 50 EMA happens to be. That's going to be our first support. I think we're going to test that. But the question is, do we fill this gap? And if we do fill the gap, are we going to continue to fall? And I think that's going to depend on the weekly time frame. So from my perspective, I'm more concerned about this level right here. Let me show you this one right here. Okay, let's let's throw away this Fibonacci retracement chart. Just look at this level, 468. That's the level I have in mind. And also this support right here. We could dip lower. I think we might be testing 472. But if 468 breaks, I'm going to become very concerned. I think this could start dipping to much lower levels into the 450s. A bigger drop will come. If we hold 468, we could try to bounce off this. So it really depends. So when it comes to the way the market moves, it also depends on the weekly time frame. A weekly close below 468 is bearish. I'm referring to the weekly chart especially. The weekly is what's very important. Uh, the weekly looks bearish, but if we close below 468, I would turn a lot more bearish and a lot more concerned. If we close above that, we could try to rebound, so wait and see. But that's my personal view. Same thing with SPY when I was referring to those levels, the weekly close. If on the weekly SPY closes below 540, if not 536, that entire range, I will turn more bearish. I'll be a lot more concerned. Weekly looks bearish, so it does suggest downsides looking imminent, especially as we're ne nearing a bearish cross in the PPO. So that's something I just want to call out call out on SPY and the QQQ. For Tesla, okay, Tesla's in its own world. One thing that concerns me is if you look at the structure on Tesla, this looks kind of symmetrical, uh, but it doesn't guarantee anything. We're looking a little bit more bearish on Tesla. It looks like it might be dipping down to another imbalance on the four-hour time frame over here. That would take us all the way down to about 232, but it's not a guarantee. What's going to matter for Tesla is going to be its earnings. So earnings is going to be huge for Tesla. Uh, I can't predict this. It's very tricky to predict because if they, even if they do well for earnings, if Elon Musk doesn't really hype AI, it might not get a pos as positive of a reaction as it could be getting. If earnings are so-so, if EPS is just okay, revenue is okay, and then we get some decent guidance, but Elon Musk starts hyping AI, starts talking about the robo-taxi event, how Tesla is about to solve autonomy and this and that, then Tesla could still bounce and run back up to the 260 plus area. So I wanted to just call that out, guys. Earnings is going to be massive for Tesla. Technicals look bearish approaching earnings. It looks like Tesla may kind of rebound a bit. If it fails to reclaim or close above its 50 EMA, the 242 area, we could be tipping all the way down to about the 232 zone. So there could be a little pop and drop, a little drop coming to Tesla. But despite the drop, do not panic. Do not panic about how Tesla looks right now. What's going to matter is going to be its earnings and what kind of reaction we get. That's going to be very, very important. Now, I did call out something very important. I'm going to show you guys this. I think it's the daily time frame that kind of shows a very interesting pattern. Now, I'm not going to guarantee anything about Tesla's earnings, but I do notice that there's a possible symmetrical structure here. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. This could be a giant inverse head and shoulders. So if you look at Tesla, it did this. I'm going to draw this out and make this very easy to understand. We had this high at 300. That's going to take us close to that, you know, 3 trillion market cap. This was a big move right here. All right, that's our first move. We're going to make this um, yellow, okay? And I will show you some other key calculations later on. This move down here was that interesting move. We're going to make this blue. And then we had this other move here where we have like the, you know, the inverse head and shoulders right? Like this. And then this is going to be green. So I'm trying to color code this just to make this very simple to understand, but see this, how symmetrical this could be looking. So if we were to get a rug pull, if Tesla truly is forming a double top and we're about to come down like this, right? Could we be looking for a move that's like this where Tesla kind of dips a bit? Let me just correct that for one second. I'll show you guys the Fibonacci retracements a little bit after, but let me just show you just a rough sketch of what this could look like. 
If Tesla were to hypothetically get a dip, are we about to see a dip like this and then a continuation higher all the way back up towards the 300 area towards the end of the year, right? Could this be what Tesla's about to do? See how symmetrical this looks, guys? Could this be it? It may be right. It could be wrong. It's possible we don't even get much of a dip and we just start to rally from here. We just continue to go to all-time highs. I don't know for sure, but look at how symmetrical this could be looking, right? This could be like our giant inverse head and shoulders. We have like a left shoulder that's right here, sort of. This could be like our head and then, you know, our right shoulder is about to form. Could that be what Tesla's about to do? I don't know for sure, guys. But when you look at this from a Fibonacci standpoint, it also makes sense. I mean, Tesla ran so much without any downside. And historically, we were down during three out of the last four earnings. So we'll have to be very, very careful. Uh, this also comes very close to our 0.618 retracements. So could we go a little lower to about 190 and then get the bounce? I don't know for sure, guys. I'm just like speculating. And this could be completely wrong. Even though technicals do suggest this is a possibility, it's also very possible Tesla gets a very tiny retracement during the pre-market and just rallies goes and goes straight up to 300. Because what if Elon Musk just hypes AI and you know nothing else happens? He just pumps AI like crazy. We could just start running like crazy from here. So I don't know for sure if we're going to get a symmetrical structure or not, but I just want to make it very clear that that's always a possibility. So for now, Tesla looks bearish. It looks like it's going to be dipping lower. It looks like it's going to be testing 232 at the very least if not possibly lower levels. That's a possibility. But just know that technicals are not everything, and the move is going to be dictated by what kind of news we get from earnings and what Elon Musk announces. We have a nice inverse tendency that could be forming. Not going to promise it, but it's always a possibility. So that being said, I just want to say I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Keep these numbers in the back of your minds, what I called out for SPY, Tesla, and the QQQ. There's no sign the stock market is crashing. This is not a real 2008 style crash. It's nothing at all like that. Unless we start losing some key levels, we, you know, I would become a lot more concerned. The QQQ is close to some of my concerned levels, like 468 and such, but SPY is not really there yet based off some calculations I have and other factors. So we'll see. There is a risk of downside, yes, but we haven't lost critical support on the weekly time frame. So we have to wait till Friday to see if SPY and the QQQ close below the levels I've marked out. So we'll see how things end up developing from here. But with that being said, guys, I want to make the video nice, short, sweet, and simple. There's going to be all these videos on the internet saying, that, you know, the market's crashing. It's going to be a 2008 style crash, this and that. Do not believe it unless we get confirmation of us losing key levels. We haven't done so yet on SPY or the QQQ or even Tesla. All right. And for Tesla, we have earnings coming up. So we'll see what ends up happening during the last three out of the last four earnings. Tesla did dip after earnings came out. But during the last report, even though Tesla's EPS revenue were not as strong, the share price pumped because Elon Musk pumped AI. So anything could happen. So always be very careful in playing these earnings. So I just want to call that out one more time. All right. That is it for my analysis. I hope you guys have an absolutely spectacular rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Tesla to the moon alongside the whole market because the long term is still very bright. And peace out.